were coming to see about us. God, the one that we that you raised up, God, we came back just to honor you this morning. We came to worship you this morning. Did anybody come to worship him? Hallelujah. Come on all over the sanctuary. Can you just begin to lift your hands? And in that sign of surrender, just put something on your lips. Hallelujah. God, we thank you this morning. God, we come to bless your name. God, thank you for healing our bodies and thank you for restoring our minds and thank you for cleaning us up and thank you for bringing us out, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name today. We give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come to honor you. The one you say has come to worship you. Oh Lord, you're my Savior. Cry to the Savior. I know. Yes, God, I've come to honor you. The man that you say has come to worship you. Can you help me call Savior? Savior, Savior. God, we know you to be our Savior. Yes, Lord. Thank you for saving. Us, oh God, you are a savior. The one you say, the one you say, we've come to honor you. We've come to lift your name, God. We come to bless you, Lord. We've come to worship you. Yeah. Come on, all over the room, just get that in your spirit. Come on, cry, Savior.
devotional this morning. God, I'm the one that you save, yeah. So because you've touched my life, God, I'll give you everything in my worship, Lord. Yeah. I've come to honor you. I've come to lift you up, God. Because you've lifted me, I'll lift you forever. Because you kept me, Lord. Say the one you kept. The one you kept. You kept me in perfect peace, Lord. You kept my mind, God. The one that you gave. Come to worship. Come on, did he keep you from danger seen and unseen? Hallelujah. Thank you for keeping us, Lord. you God yeah to come on one more time the one that you saved yeah the one you saved. come on make it personal saints yeah the one that you saved the one yeah you saved. oh Lord the one you made a way for you. the one you keep bringing us out the one that the you one restored you the one that you delivered the one that you delivered the one that you delivered the one you picked up the one that you brought out the one that you picked up the one that you brought out you restored me you remade me oh god in you i knew yeah the one you say to worship you now can we begin to fill this place with worship hallelujah come on just fill this place with the worship our sustaining God he keeps keeping us and he makes ways time and time again can we just lift our master in this place thank you God we forever lift your name we forever praise you we forever lift you up yeah Come on, come on, somebody give God praise right where you are. Come on, anybody come to bless the Lord? Anybody come to bless the Lord? The Bible says I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue be in my mouth. Did somebody come to bless the Lord? Somebody come to bless the Lord? I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Even when I'm going through, he got my praise. Even when my body wrecking with pain, he got my praise. Any my wor- anybody come to worship the Lord? Anybody come to worship the Lord? Anybody come to worship the Lord? The Bible says that he inhabits the praise of his people. So if you want God in your life, I dare you to throw up a praise in this place. I dare you to throw up a praise in this place. I dare you to throw up a hallelujah in this place. Yeah, God been too good. God been too good. God been too kind. Somebody give God praise right where you are. Somebody give God praise right where you are. I came to bless the Lord. I came to bless the Lord. He's been too good. He's been too kind. He didn't sit down on me, so I won't sit down on him. I dare somebody give you more than you got. I dare somebody give more than you got. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I decided I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad on this day. This could have been my memorial service. But God, I came to give you all that I got because you woke me up this morning with purpose, for purpose, and because of purpose. So I give you all that I got. Somebody come to bless the Lord with me. Yeah. I got a different praise on this morning. Because when I woke up this morning, the Bible told me this morning that he would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask or think. So whatever I'm thinking, he's going to do greater than that. Whatever I ask, he's going to do greater than that. So God, I receive all the blessings that you have for me. I dare somebody to give God praise right where you are. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. 
God, I thank you for doing exceedingly. You go past my thoughts. You go around my thoughts. You go above my thoughts. God, I thank you for doing what you're about to do in my life. Whatever I'm thinking, you above that. Whatever's in my heart, you above that. Whatever I want, you're going to give me greater than that. I serve a great God. He got to keep in power. Somebody shout power. Power. give him praise. Can I share another testimony? God woke me up this morning. That's why I give him praise. Can I share another testimony? God woke me up this morning. That's why I give him praise. Can I tell, share another testimony? God woke me up this morning. That's why I give him praise. If he don't do nothing else, he done enough. So for that, I say hallelujah. 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 It's the highest praise. God, I thank you. 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 It sounds like somebody else got a praise on the inside and they got to let it out. They got a praise on the inside. I dare somebody shout with the voice of triumph. I dare somebody give God praise. testimony for a moment. God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. 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 Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. Just take that. 
God praise. Let somebody give God praise. Amen, amen, amen. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God, we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. So, Father God, if anybody going through something, Father God, join this praise party right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, you don't care about our problems, but Father God, you focus on our praise. So, Father God, right now we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. The enemy thought that we weren't going to bring our praise when he was wrong. The enemy thought that we weren't going to bring our worship when he was wrong. The enemy thought that we weren't going to bring our prayer. He was wrong. Because I got a reason to give God praise. So, 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 so. Welcome, 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 welcome to Unique Gospel House of Prayer. Can we give God praise in this place? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here at Unique Gospel House of Prayer, we have a simple vision, mission, and motto. Our vision is to see the Word of God change the lives like it did for me. Everyone who connects with this ministry, our mission is to minister the Word of God to everyone. Those who believe and become baptized will be saved. And our motto, repeat after me, obey God. Obey God. Obey God. He'll bless you real good. Amen. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. He made it fail. My God made it fail. Yes, he did. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. Did it? you have no power you have no dominion ye of little power God made it fail oh thank you God <laughs> God made it fail And hello visitors we are so happy that you came out to fellowship with us today oh thank you and these are the announcements for the week of April the 14th we have children's service at 9 a.m. we also have teen service at 9 a.m. and then we have Sunday school at 9 30 a.m. I really encourage you to come out to Sunday school because we have an incredible, we have an incredible team of ministers that want to share God's word with you. And right now, where you're at, where God made it fail, this is our 1030 service. Yes, thank you, God. We 
have Tuesday service, and it starts at 6 a.m., and that's intercessory prayer. I encourage each and every one of you from 6 until 7, come out. Do you have anything that you're petitioning the Lord for? I encourage you to come out, lay at the altar, leave that burden there because God will make it fail. That situation that you're going through, I know a God that will make it fail. Thank you, God. We also have an amazing intercessory prayer team. They have sacrificed. They have labored and fasted for each and every one of us. So just in case you need that one-on-one -on -one attention and you need someone to touch and agree with you and pray, we advise you, I encourage you to come out at 6 until 7 p.m. for intercessory prayer. And immediately following prayer, service starts at 7. We have Thursday Bible School at 7 p.m. This is the time where you can come and get the meats and the potato. You can have that intimate time with God. So I encourage you to come out at 7 p.m. And these are your upcoming events. Unity Annual Camping. So attention, attention, attention. All parents of young girls and boys between the age of 10 and 18. We would love for your child to join us for our annual camping trip. <laughs> this year, 20 years of camping. It will be like no other. So please see Minister Acoff, if you can please stand and you can talk to him so he can share details in regards to the upcoming camping trip. On behalf of my husband and my wonderful husband, Elder Kevin James and myself, we would like to sponsor two teams that would like to go on this camping trip. We believe in sewing. We believe in sewing into our young people. So I'm gonna leave it up to Minister Acoff and also Pastor Youth um, Troy, and they'll make the decision who they want for the two individuals, and we'll do the rest. And that will conclude the announcements for today. And do not allow anything or anyone stop you from having a beautiful day on purpose. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody give God a hand praise. Come on, come on. We still, we still living off God made it fail. Come on, God made it fail. Huh? God made it fail. Amen. Everyone standing, everyone standing that can and will for our ministry of giving. Amen. We thank God for our ministry of giving this free will offering. If you desire to text to give, you can text that to 414-292-9265. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you, our online viewers. Let us pray before you come around. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank, that you, thank you that you made it fail. God, when I was having a heart attack, God, you made it. Hello, somebody. Oh, my God. God, you, you made it fail. God, when Elder Kevin James was there for 18 seconds, God, you, you made it fail. God, when somebody else was, when, when God knows what God beat is, God, you, 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 you made it fail. And God, we, 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 we thank you, God. God, you are a good, 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 good God. God, you, 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 you made it fail. You are rocking a weary land. Now, you are sheltering a time of the storm. God, you are wheeling a, in a, in a, in a, in a middle of the wheel. God, you are a good, 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 good God. God, you are a father. God, you made it fail. 
When it tried to come my way, God, you pushed it back.
Everybody glad to be in God's service one more time. Y'all ready today, boy? It's just Man, I'm... we are blessed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Take your seats if you're able. Take your seats if you're able. talking about how God made stuff fail. That just, you know. Um, and and, the, and the, the reality family is that um, one thing God, God always does is um, he shows up. Always. <clears throat> Look at somebody, if you're able, just grab them by the hand or connect with them and just say, I don't know what you're going through. I'm not sure what you may be dealing with. But God going to show up. And when he show up, he shows out. If you believe it, give God praise. If you believe it, give God praise. So I want to, I want to introduce a family. I've I've known them, um, all of the children. I've known them all of their lives, um, and I met the parents when I was a a little boy. Um, grateful for this family. Um, on yesterday, they did something that was amazing. Um, they did a walk run in honor of um, of Chevette, right, and in honor of those that um, that battle different issues and things in their body. And uh, one thing we know that um, God is faithful to his promises. And I wanna just call them up. Um, some of them live in, in, in other states and we wanna just bring the Green family up at this time. Let them speak with you and... Come on, can we just celebrate what God is doing for Chevette in her life at this 
Y'all can just come stand. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. How good it is to gather in God's house, to worship, to praise, and to bless his holy name. I said, how good it is to gather. Come on, family. I'm no stranger to this house. Come on. How good it is to gather in God's house. If you have breath in your body, you ought to bless him. If you're breathing right now, you ought to bless him. If you can just wave your hands, you ought to bless him. If you can stand on your feet, you ought to bless him. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and give God glory. I said give God glory. Give God glory. Come on and give God glory. He's worthy. Give God glory. You're commanded to give God glory. Lift your hands up and give God glory. Open your mouth and give God glory. And when you give God glory. And when you give God glory. Things begin to shake and shift in your life. Come on. I tried them and I know them. I said I tried them and I know them. I tried them and I know them. Oh, I tried them and I know them. I tried them and I... I'm sorry. I just know that my God causes me to triumph. I don't have an option but to win. He causes us to triumph. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I'm just full. God. I walked in. I done lost the contact. I only can see through one eye right now. But God is still faithful. Hallelujah. Okay. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Your word is true, God. And when he says, by his stripes, the 40 minus one, the 39 stripes that our Savior took, we are healed. ED, we are healed. This is a part of the journey. She is healed. I, I dare you to open your mouth and say, she is healed. Point to her right now and say, she is healed. She is healed. In the name of Jesus, she is healed. From the top of her, oh God, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, she is healed. Lung activates, heart activates. The blood of Jesus I activate. For we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed, God. You are healed in the name of Jesus. 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 We trust your word, God. We trust your word. We trust your word, Jesus. He said, I give unto you power. That same power that rose Jesus from the dead is still working today. Say it still works. Say it still works. Say it still works. Thank you, Jesus. On behalf of our family, on behalf of Shavit Green, on behalf of every little breath we take, LLC, which is on the pathway to being a 501c3, we want to express our sincerest gratitude to you, family. Unity Gospel House of Prayer. No matter where we travel, no matter, no matter where we go, where we live, this is home. And to know that support comes from home means so much to our family. Knowing that the unadulterated word is still being taught. Knowing that the oil still flows from the altar. Rivers of healing are right now in the aisles of this building. 
Woo. Jesus. Miracles are still happening. And so we just bless God for this congregation, for this assembly of the saints, for the people of God who intercede, who pray, and who give generously with their funds. We thank you and we bless God for you. So come on, give yourselves a round of applause. We appreciate you, family. Hallelujah. Woo. So in uh, organizing the walk run yesterday, we were also partnering with um, Donate Life Wisconsin. And so it's really important family that you have an understanding. The people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so I, I, I pledge you not to be ignorant when you have access to information. If you have a smartphone, you have access to information. And so don't believe the myths and the things and the fables that people of old have told you. Do the research and know for yourself. The same way we search the scriptures for our own understanding and God gives us the revelation, he does the same in practical ways as well. He's the same Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so there are a lot of myths about why you don't want to be a donor or I don't know what's going to happen to my organs and things like that. We as believers, and this is my charge, so my speech is a little different for you today than it was for those yesterday, but this is a house of believers. And we understand what happens after we've lived a long and prosperous and a healthy life. We return back to the, lust, the dust excuse me, from which we were formed. And our, and our spirits ascend to glory, I hope. Hallelujah. Okay. And so there's an opportunity to become a donor so that the life that your lungs, your tissue, your cornea still has, it can grant somebody else a second chance at life. And so, family, if you are not an organ donor, this is a testimony and a reason why you should be. Amen? And so I wanna leave you with this. There's an opportunity for you to become a donor. You don't have to go all the way down to the DMV to become a donor. You can go to... <laughs> <laughs> donate life I'm so full y'all I'm so full I'm so full donate life.net donate life.net uh, yes it's right there on the screen you are amazing thank you so much donate life.net and there is a green button that you press and it family it only takes you three minutes to become a donor and our pastor has done it we've done it up here And so her life is a testimony and it charged me to dispel the myths to become a donor uh, myself. And so family, please, I want you to think about it, do your research and go online to donatelife.net and become a donor, amen? She was gonna speak, but I was to speak on her behalf. She just wants to say thank you and she really loves you, all right? God bless you all. Come on, can we give God praise for the, for the Green family? There was a picture that they were getting ready to show and they can, they can feel free to show that picture. Um, that picture that you see, um, that's me um, and the young lady. Her name is Baraka Smith. Um, Baraka has been with our ministry since she was a little girl, moved down to Memphis. Um, the same lung issue that Chevette has, Baraka had it. Um, she went through it. Um, I hadn't seen Baraka in years. I had just saw pictures of her, and um, she didn't look well, right? And, and she looked like she wasn't going to make it. Um, notice I said she looked like. Um, so yesterday when we got um, to the Silver Spring Neighborhood Center, and she got out the car, and she ran to me and literally jumped in my arms and crying and hugging. Um, I said, there is nothing too hard for God. So can we just give God a big praise that the same God that did it for Baraka is the same God that is doing it for Chevette. So we are, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Um, we are blessed. And, and, and I'll be honest, when I, I never had anybody um, express to me about being a donor. I've had people say, are you a donor? But I've never had anybody explain it. I was talking with Bryson on yesterday, and when he explained it, it just made a lot of sense. Um, and I love how he, how he, he worded it. He said, man, live, live a long, healthy life, a long, healthy, prosperous life. But he said something that really resonated 
he said, when you pass away, how many, how many, is 72 tissues or something in you that, that, uh, that somebody can use? So look, look at somebody next to you and say, you got 72 things on the inside of you that after you've lived a long, come on, speak over their life, healthy, prosperous, blessed life, when God see fit to call you home, something in you now can keep living. I dare you to just shout one time to somebody, you better keep living. Keep living, man. So, um, grateful, grateful. Um, I give honor to God who's the head of my life, to his son Jesus Christ who came, suffered, and died that we all have a right to the tree of life. Um, I'm, 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 I'm. See, you've passed the chore. It's your fault. Got everybody all stirred up and stuff. And when you when you start thinking about how, like, like, whatever you're going through right now, God is going to make it fail. All right, he just going So just encourage somebody real quick on your role Because you don't know who needs to say whatever you might be dealing with God is going to make it fail The Lord been good to me Been. He been good to me. I didn't have no money. That's all right. Some of my friends thought that was funny. But I'm so glad today. So that I'm so glad today that I can stand right here and say that the Lord He's been good to me. Come on, just put your hands together like this one time. Here we go, listen. I come from a poor family. Didn't have much. But the Lord been good to me. I come from a poor family. We didn't have much. But the Lord, he been good to me. Listen, sometimes I didn't have no money but that's all right some of my friends thought that was funny i said you missed the bird song i'm so glad to say i can stand right here today to say the lord been good so y'all ready hey he been good he been good he been good so been good to me Do a little crap. You wanna do a little crap? 
out of all the things that I've done wrong in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Come on, you ought to grab somebody by the hand and tell them, out of all the things that I've done wrong in my lifetime. Oh, out of all the things, all the things, real big on that, out of all the things, all the things. Yeah. I know that the Lord He been good to me Yeah Come on shake somebody like you're mad at him and say He been good to me Say he been good to me He been good Some of y'all ain't shaking nobody, shake up and say, God been good to me. God been good to me. When I look back over my life. Been good to me. So we are blessed, we are blessed. Sit down, y'all, sit down, y'all. I give honor to whom honor is due, our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, my wife, my kids, all of y'all. Come on, online, give God praise for everybody. Give God praise, give God praise, give God praise, give God praise, give God praise. Listen, listen carefully, listen carefully. I need y'all to understand that there are two truths that the whole world need to know. The first truth is God loves you. And the second truth is he gave his life for you. So before I go any further, those are two truths that we need to understand. Look at somebody and say, God loves you. And he gave his life for you. If you don't like that person, look at the person on the other side of you and say, God loves you. And he gave his life for you. Now talk to yourself like you always do because I talk to myself. Say, self, God loves you. And he gave his life for you. You know what, in, 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 in my life, in my life, God has always showed up. It's always showed up. And what, what's amazing to me, family, is he didn't just show up when I was doing things right. I don't know if I got any witnesses. Have God ever showed up for you and you didn't deserve it? But he didn't give you what you should have. Tell somebody, I'm glad God didn't give me what I deserve. But Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. I want to share something with you briefly. Galatians chapter 2. Y'all gave me 28 minutes to preach. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. I hope they can get it on the screen for me. Appreciate you. It says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Am I right about it? So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For me, look at somebody on your road and look real saved. It's, it's one on every road, trust me. Look at him and say, you know, tell him, say, I know you've been saved all your life. Because I can tell how your posture is. You just. But tell him, I ain't been saved all my life. But tell him Jesus gave his life for me. When I was a wretch, that's old school talk. When I was a wretch undone, he saved a wretch like, like me. Romans chapter 8, verse number 12 and verse number 13. Watch what it says. Therefore, 
Dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. And I want to just pause for just a moment because, family, all of our sinful natures, they urge us. Go back to the same verse I was just reading, please. They urge us. Your, 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 your sinful nature is your, the kernel you urges you to do things that go against your life that's now in Christ. Have you ever heard when, when I would do good? Evil is always, I just need so I don't feel like I'm in a room by myself. Anybody ever, other than me, when you, when you want to do good, evil right there, just stand up real quick. Okay, I can, I can finish my message then. When, 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 when I would do good, evil is always present. So watch this. Take your seat. Brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Even that person that you spoke to five minutes ago, that super saved one. It's some stuff in them that urges them but you got to be able to resist the urge. Matter of fact, the Bible says if you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. So that lets me know that when I stand strong against what the devil wants me to do and I choose not to do it, he runs from me. Might I suggest too many of you been running from him? You got to get to a place and it's getting ready to happen soon. Shout if you know the devil in this season of your life, he getting ready to run from you. Next verse, please. It says, watch this. For if you live by the urges or its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit, and that's the capital S, so that's God's Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. My granddad preached the message when I was a little boy, and the subject was why die when you can live? Why die when you can live? Live. Life is a choice, just like being happy is a choice. I read a book called The How of Happiness, The How of Happiness. And I always, I used to say this quite often, and, and I was wrong, so forgive me. I used to say, you won't always be happy, but you will always find joy. But that's not right. Happiness is a choice. And in this book, The, the How of Happiness, they say that 50% of oh, I got up. It's okay. 50%. Oh, we behave. <laughs> the Lord knew I was getting ready to go there, so he just made it on right, right? <laughs> please work on it, please. 50%, 50% of happiness is genetics. 50% of your happiness is from your mom and your daddy. You can't control your genetics. If you see any of my kids and you see us walking next to each other, you'll be able to look and be able to say, oh, that, that's, that's your dad. That's your dad. they built like me. They all got high booties like me. How much weight you lose, you're going to have a high booty because your daddy got a high booty. And I got my high booty from my mama. My mama got a, don't you look at my mama booty. My mama got a high booty. So high booties running Freddy. They're running my family so my kids when they came out. Guess how I knew they was mine. When the doctor smiled, I said, yeah, that's their dad. They got your daddy booty, boy. It's, it's nothing they can do. It's genetics. That's 50%. Another 10% is your environment. When you were born in the environment that you were born in, it was nothing you could do about it. Not until you became of age to say, I don't want to live in this environment. But as a child, 
Your genetics and your environment make up 60% of your happiness. But the 40%, the 40% that we're left with is up to you to make yourself happy. Matter of fact, I went over with the teens this morning when Paul was before King Agrippa. And he was facing all type of allegations and prison and being this and being that and being beaten and even being killed. Before the king, he stood before the king at the lowest moment of his life. And he stood up and he said, King Agrippa, I think myself happy. So that means happiness is a choice. I need somebody going through something to jump up and shout, I think myself happy. Come on, talk to yourself. God getting ready to bring me out of this. He getting ready to save my family. He getting ready to bless my finances. He getting ready to heal my mind. I need, some of y'all ain't doing nothing. That's why you sat. Think yourself happy. And I think myself happy because Jesus always shows up. And I guess that's why I got emotional when, when they got to singing the song, God Made It Fail. Because I need somebody to just look back over your life real quick. Just look back and tell the person on your road the reason I'm looking back. Because I'm looking at, back at everything that the devil tried, but God made it fail. I need you to shout for like eight seconds and say, God, I thank you for making it Every, everything that he tried, everything that he tried, every, everything that he tried, every trap that he set, every dirt that he threw, God made it. God made it. Are y'all still with me? Jesus loved us enough that he gave his life. Jesus proved his love. He died in our place. His love took my sin so that I could take his righteousness. Did you hear what I just said? His love died my death so that I could live his life. Tell somebody he shows up. Jesus gave himself for you and for me. What a savior. Think about your raggedy life. And how good are you once was and all the trifling stuff that you oh if the person on your road knew some of the stuff that you did they would clinch their purse they would grab they would go sit by somebody else but thank god that he saved the wretch like you that's if i could end service off that jump up and shout he did it for me he did it for me so catch this I'm not sure if we realize how powerful, amazing that is. Jesus always shows up. And I heard Anita Wilson say, when he shows up, he shows, he shows out. Now we know how and why Jesus showed up, but now the question becomes, will you show up for you? It, we already know, remember, remember on Easter Sunday I asked you, well, we know he got up, but I ask you, what did you do with Jesus? He, he got up so that we could get up. He lives so that we can, that we can, that makes sense what I'm saying. Will you show up when you don't feel like it? Will you show up when nobody else does? The problem with so many people is that they make so many excuses why they cannot instead of making the decision why they can. Yeah, it's, it's a lot you can't do. But I want to challenge you to think about what I, what I can do. I don't know about you, but I grew up with real grandmamas. If you're a grandmama, I'm not being funny, but I, I, I grew up with a, with a real. 
How many ever real? Yeah, some of them call them big mama. If you got somebody over 70 and they ain't got a little piece of candy in their in they purse, something wrong. Every real grandmama got a little piece of, and she better have a piece of butterscotch. We ain't even like butter. I'm talking to, we ain't even like butterscotch growing up, but candy was candy back then. They just, if you got a little kid that start crying, sit him next to Big Mama. She gonna give him two chances. First chance gonna be this little piece of candy. But if you keep hollering, now I'm gonna pinch you. How many ever got pinched by Big Mama in church? Woman, you ain't even related to me and you have the nerve to pinch me. I forgot, what was I talking about? I forgot. It's, 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 it's important, family, to understand Jesus shows up. We can't make an excuse why we don't show up for ourselves. Look at somebody and say, you are seen, you are loved, you are valued, you're needed. Don't let the devil say, look at me when I'm talking to you. Don't you let the devil make you think you ain't him or you ain't her. If you're talking to a God, say you him. And you better give God praise like you him. You fearfully and wonderfully made. If you're talking to a woman, say you that chick. You are her and you better walk like it. Am I talking right? I got some good, for new, good news for you, and it's simple. God will use you right where you are. He'll use you right where you are. Alice Roosevelt said, feel what's empty. Feel what's empty. Then she said, empty what's full. And then she said, scratch where it itches. Do what you need to do. You, one thing you cannot do is die full. See, every, every experience that you've been through, as bad as it is, as many days as it have made you cry, as many times as you wanted to give up and not wanted to go through it, as many times as you said, Lord, why me? It's purpose attached to it. I need about 500 of y'all that have been through some crazy stuff to just say, God, I thank you for the purpose attached to this craziness that I've been going. Tell somebody, I don't believe God brought me this far. Say, so you ain't looking at me when I'm talking to you. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. See, watch this, family. Everything big starts with something little. Never decide to do nothing only because you can do a little. You would catch that on Find the Light. Yeah, you want to put that in your notes. He's like, oh, that's game right there. Yo, I'm giving you all this for free. Never make the decision to do nothing only because you can do a little. I was at the gym the other day, and I saw one of my sisters and her husband. And I was, I was working out, and I saw them. And they went to the stairs. When you go to a gym, the stairs will always be open. And the machine you should use is the one nobody wants to use. That's the one that's the most effective. Am I right about it? I see them walking, they don't see me, and I'm, I'm working out, I'm doing my thing. And she got on the steps. And she got to go on, and she had this look on her face like, Ooh. The pattern right here. Looking around. She did three minutes. So I said, hey, she's like, bro, I saw you on the stairs. She said, Pastor, I could only do three minutes. I said, well, the next time you come. See, I, 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 I. Whenever you 
deal with somebody that look like they may be defeated, you can't let them stay at that place. Because see, the reality is, before you can get to 30 minutes, you got to start with, you got to get past three minutes first. And I don't know who I'm talking to. You feel insignificant because you measure yourself up with somebody else. But if you know you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you at the pace God wants you to be at with where you are in your life, you ought to jump up and say, I'm going to start where I am. Tell your whole world, I may can't do what you can do. I may can't be what you can be, but I can be who God says I am. Are oh, y'all hearing me? The problem is that we, we seldom think of what we have. Instead, we think of what we, what we lack. You live in two worlds, a world of fear or either a world of faith. That's everybody here. Two worlds. We live in a world of fear or we live in a world of what? Of faith. There was someone here or watching and you feel in your heart that you need to take action now. It's been pressing you. It's been, it's been, it's been. Now, this, this type of preaching is not for everybody. But this is only for the ones that you know you right there. You, 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 you right. You right on the edge of your life changing for the better for the rest of your life. And I need you to scream loud as you can. ready to happen and I need you to tell somebody praise God for me in advance because I don't want you to wait until you see it it's easy to shout when the battle is over but tell them I'm praising God in the middle of the ask that person next to you will you show up if not careful, we blame everyone else. Yeah. We blame other people and others don't even matter. I'm talking to somebody. You blaming everybody else. And it's you. Thursday night. Elder KJ says something so profound. I've heard him say it before, but Thursday night, for whatever reason, it resonated more. He said he had an elder express to him when he was trying to fix his wife. He said, man, stop trying to fix your wife. Fix you. And Charlissa looking like, I, didn't, I ain't never, uh-uh, what you mean fix? What, what? And he said, you fix you. You, you fix yourself, and God will fix your spouse. But if not careful, we, we keep blaming our spouses, and we ain't never took time to look in our spiritual mirror and say, it's some stuff. is there anybody other than me have came to a point in your life, it's some stuff you need to work on for yourself. <laughs> Procrastination is the grave in which opportunity is buried. Procrastination. And many of you are right there, and you keep putting it off. I'm talking to somebody. You keep putting it off. You keep making excuses not to be great. You keep making excuses not to be great. Other day I was, other day, now I, I, I don't want to get in trouble, I ain't going to get in trouble, I'm grown, I can say what I want to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I ain't sorry, I can say what I want to say. I was, in, I was in Phoenix with my son, and he was asleep. And I'm watching, and this lady came on the news channel, and she started baking cookies and pies and cakes and now she can only take so many orders because it's too much 
I'm, I'm, I'm heading somewhere. It's two. It's the orders. It's, it's, it's f- for months. She's already, she can't take no orders for Christmas. And, the, and, and, and they asked her, they said, how did you know that you could do it? She said, I didn't. She said, but one person tasted one of my cakes. And they said, this is amazing. And she said, I had never had any. I had people eat it, but nobody ever told me how good what I created was. And she said, I believed her when she told me. I need somebody on every row to find one person and say, tell somebody, you are amazing. Say, look at me when I'm talking to you. You are amazing. Tell them God getting ready to take where you are and he finna bless you so much that you won't have room enough to to receive it. Maybe I'm just talking to myself. Come on, Tilo. Maybe I'm just talking to, maybe I'm just talking to Tilo. Is there anybody else know that you right? One person away. Come on, shake that person like you're mad at him and tell him, I believe in you. Tell him, keep grinding, keep pressing. Keep getting the repetitions in. God getting ready to open up a door for you that nobody will be able to to close if I'm right about it. Give God praise. Are y'all hearing me? So, he shows up, he shows, he shows up, your gift will make room for you that sets you before great men. The reason you haven't made it in front of great men yet is because you ain't using your gift. I'm going to put it out there. This ain't for everybody, this is for one person. And she know who she is. Mm, sister. My birthday, my birthday is April the 26th. Yeah, you can clap. It's my birthday, April 20th. You clap. And I started doing a no bread, no sugar. I start eating between noon and eight every day because I want my I want I want my summer body. No, 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 no. I, you, you say what you want. My wife told me, boy, get the body that you want. So it don't matter what you think. She told me I could be sexy this summer. So when you see me sexy this summer, she'll be with me and she approved this sexiness that's getting ready to happen. In the name of Jesus. Then you, did you approve it? Okay. So this young lady made, listen to me. She made a she made a peach cobbler pound cake. Let me explain. This is a lady and my wife approves of it. I'll see different dishes and I'll send her stuff just to see like can you really get down like that? Cuz she made these caramel cupcakes and when I bit into it, I got saved all over again. No, y'all, I thought I was safe, Elder, but when I bit this caramel car, I said, I got saved. The caramel is real. She don't buy the stuff for the caramel. She make it on the stove, and when I bit it, so I sent her a text. I said, hey, sis, what you know about this? Months ago, when I started my plan, I'm leaving service one day. She said, here, Pastor, here's you. And I, I said, huh? And I, look, I went in the back. I looked at it. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> but I couldn't eat it. I go eat with my family. 
I'm eating no bread, no sugar. I set it in front of them. They open it up, and they just. <laughs> and my wife, who's not a real big dessert person, she said, boo, this, boo, this, boo, she said, boo. I ain't never had nothing like this. The cake was so good. The cake was so good. And I still ain't had it, but I will on my birthday because I'm telling her right now, and you know who you are. The waitress came, was taking her orders looking, and the waitress looked at the... She said, I'm... She said, that looks yummy. Where did you guys get that from? And I saw us, the lady to go to, we know, to go to our church, our ministry. She, she makes it. She says, well, we, that looks amazing. She's, she said, like, I, I, I mean, I bet that's really good. I said, I haven't tasted it, but and then my wife, my kids, they all like, man, this is amazing. She said, she said, <laughs> she said, we're looking. I'm heading somewhere. We're, we're looking to add desserts to our brunch menu. She said, that looked like it a sale. I said, wait a minute. I pulled out my cell phone, scrolled through my numbers, found the sister number and called her with the lady and put her on the phone. Hey, sis, I'm connecting you with somebody can connect you with somebody that can connect you with somebody because I got Betty Crocker in my house and I ain't never met her so if Betty Crocker can be a multi-millionaire you can be the same thing I need that's real big I need y'all to give God praise for somebody on your road and say you next you next you gotta tell them, you gotta tell them. If you see, if you buy somebody that ain't talking to you, they a hater. So get up and go sit by somebody else. Tell them you next, you next. You one conversation away. You one text message away. You one email. You one Instagram post away. Some of y'all like, can I get 10 more minutes? Some of y'all like, some of y'all like. For what God want to do for you, you should be praising him more than how you praising him. You better give God your best praise. Tell yourself, I'm next. I don't care what's been happening. I'm next. Tone G, you next? So, and, and I, I want to share one, something with you in my last eight minutes that y'all gave me. This morning, this, this morning, I got up and I went for my walk. And I got to go work out and walk again later because Pookie challenged me yesterday. He didn't know. He do 20,000 steps a day. Yeah, 20, I was doing 10. So how I'm wired is, he, he really was bragging. You know, you know. He, yeah, I do 20,000 steps a day. Shot town, shot town. They ran you out of shot town while you talking. That's why you here. So. But it motivated me, and I'm going to tell you why. And I told my wife this, and I got emotional. I even told her we got to take a trip too, man. We're, Tisa, can he go? Okay, cool. You can go. <laughs> but I was at the hospital. I'm looking at, 
We call him Pookie. His name was Romalis Jamerson. I'm looking at Pookie. I'm never Elder Troy. I'm never Big Murph. And we sitting there. We talking. We laughing. And I saw his body going to convulsions. And I saw his body twist up. And I saw his neck turn and twist. And I saw him started shaking. And I didn't know when a person is having a seizure, you're not supposed to touch them. If you do anything, you're supposed to get their tongue so they don't bite or swallow their tongue. Y'all, I wasn't trained. Guess what I did? I grabbed his feet, elder grabbed the arm, both grabbed the arm, and I just begin to call on the name of Jesus. So I, some of y'all ain't saying nothing. Now I know I didn't do it right, but I did it right. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. You ought to grab somebody by the hand and say when the devil want to try to kill you, he want to take you out, but I refuse to let you die because Jesus shows. So watch this. I got it this morning, did my prayer, read my scripture, my wife said, you going walking? I said, absolutely. So I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. While I walk because it was early, I saw dew on the ground, D-E-W, not Mountain Dew, <laughs> dew. Catch this about dew. Dew doesn't come from above. It doesn't come from below. Dew just shows up. Or we, we could use the word condensation, but, but it, 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 just, it, it don't come from up. It don't come from below. It just shows up. It just shows up. It will only show up when the conditions are right. Just stay with me for a few more minutes. So I'm, I'm walking. I see this. I see this dude. I'm, I'm looking at it. I get the. So I looked up. Do, because I know that everything God creates is a purpose why he created it. Listen, touch yourself and say, even me. You'll catch that on your way home. It's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a purpose that you were created. It's a purpose that he created do. And when I looked up some benefits of do, guess what do does? One thing it does is it refreshes the body. The body gets tired after working all day. There is a shortage of energy. Physically, some people start feeling weak due to work pressure. In this case, you can collect morning dew and drink it. This refreshes the body and allows you to prepare yourself for all the activities of the day and keep you interjected. Energetic. Can I say something else? Dew does. It gives you relief from pimples. Come on. Morning dew has high oxygen content, which makes it suitable for skin care. It helps reduce pimples and freckles. If you also have acne, apply morning dew drops on the skin regularly. You can drink it or spray it on your face. Can I go deeper? It reduces eye soreness. If your eyes look red after waking up in the morning, you can put a few drops of fresh morning dew in your affected eyes. This will also keep the eyes healthy and improve their eyesight. Applying morning dew on the face or drinking it reduces the, the, the oiliness of the face. But it just shows up. It don't come from up. 
It don't come from below. It just shows up. And there are benefits that I just read that you can go research on what happens when it shows up. Might I suggest, since Jesus then already showed up, can we give God praise for the benefits that come? It's up to you to receive, I'm talking to, it's up to you to receive the benefits of him. Can I talk Bible? Hosea 14 and 5 says, I will be to Israel like a refreshing dew from heaven. Israel will blossom like the lily. It will send roots deep into the soil like the cedars in Lebanon. Now watch this. The cedar trees that grow in the mountains of Lebanon hold a very special significance for the Christian. Can I go deeper? Solomon used those strong timbers to build God's temple in 1 Kings 7, 2, and 3. The Bible also refers to them as the basis of several metaphors. Can I go deeper? One thing that they have is deep roots. For every 10 feet of height above the ground, the tree roots go down 30 feet underground. So I want my being rooted and grounded in love to reflect the cedar. Are y'all still with me? I want, I, I need deep rounded, deep grounded roots of love when I got to deal with people. Because if I don't, I'll treat people the way they treat me. And that's not Christ-like. I'm supposed to treat people how I want to be treated. Even if they treat me bad, I'm supposed to treat them. Ephesians 3 and 17, what do we say? Ephesians 3 and 17, what do we say? Then Christ will make his home in your hearts. As you trust in him, your roots will grow down into God's love, and that is what will keep you strong. And many of you are trying to be kept strong from relationships with other people. That's why you're bitter. That's why you're frustrated. Because guess what? It'll never be strong with people. I'm talking from experience. But it got to be, same verse, please. God, that's what keeps you strong. People ask me, how, how can you be around somebody and, and, and they did this or they did that and they did that? They, they still belong to God. Because when I wasn't doing right, Freddie, I still belong to. Are y'all still with me? Another thing that, that, that they do, penetration. The tips of the roots are equipped with the substance that allows them to drill through the toughest of rock and continue the deep rootedness of the tree. So I want my life to drill through difficult times so that in the end, I am anchored in a rock foundation, a solid foundation. <laughs> solid foundation, and I want solid relationships. Don't be my friend, be solid. I'm talking to somebody. Huh? I'm done. I'm done with friends. I have been. I learned the hard way. You ain't got no. Look, look, look at somebody. Look at your friend you sitting by. You ain't got. You ain't got no friends. Say I don't need you to be my friend. I just need you to be solid. Like I need. I need you to rock with me when 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 you know when when it gets weary. I I I I, I need you to support me when I'm really really going through. Right? No. Don't don't try to get out with me because you think I'm somebody or. You clout chasing or you, you want to be in the picture with me. No, rock with me when don't nobody see it. 
pray for me when it's hard for me to pray for myself. Be happy for me when I succeed. Because the last time I told you God did something for me, your attitude changed, boo-boo. Your energy got real weird, boo-boo. When I was struggling and I was about to kill myself, I'm praying for you. You texting me every day. Soon as God upgraded me, I don't hear from you no more. Need you to be solid. Yeah, because can I tell you something about life? Life gonna bring some storms, Delante. Life gonna bring some pain. Life gonna bring you some days, man, where you don't even want to be here. But if you got somebody solid, Are y'all hearing me? One thing about the, the cedars in Lebanon, they give resistance to decay. They're so strong that when disease, toxic people, I'm trying to come into your. I told a couple guys the other day, they said, man, we'll. We'll hear from you. I said, because you're, I don't like your toxicity. And one of them said, man, what, what, what that mean? I said, you, you bring my energy down. God been too good for me to sit. So yeah, I got you blocked. I pay the bill. So I didn't even, listen. I don't even want to know you called me. When I see your number, I get, I get nauseous because you ain't got, you mean to tell me God woke you up this morning? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he closed you in your right mind and you got the activities of your limbs and you got another chance and you ain't never got nothing. I choose to stay unbothered. I choose to stay. I love you. I love you, but I... Cause can I tell you something? Now I'm talking about me. Maybe this ain't you. I don't work too hard for my peace. I need somebody other than me that you don't work too hard for your peace. But you ain't finna let a devil in hell disrupt your peace. Matter of fact, can we just, and I'm, I'm done preaching, I'm just talking now. Can we give God praise for peace? How much is peace worth? I don't want to know what's going on with them. I don't want to know that they're getting a divorce. I don't know. Can we pray for that marriage? Can we pray for that son? Come here, Los. It's one of my sons. I hadn't seen him in a while. Come here. So, so I, I sent him a text. He didn't respond. Let his mom know, hey, I reached out to Los and she said, Pastor, just keep him, keep him in prayer. I seen some things on him and it, it troubled my, my spirit. It's troubled the, the spiritual dad side of me. And I know Lowe's got purpose in his life. I, I know he's anointed. He's wise beyond his years. But I, but I also know that the same anointing I see on him, the same anointing the enemy sees on him. So the enemy trying to figure out how can I get him? And guess what? I was trying to figure out how can I get him? Some of y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Some of y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Y'all to hear what I said. The devil is trying to figure out how can he get your son or your daughter. But you ought to be devising a plan right now saying, I'm figuring out how to get my baby back. I dare every parent to connect with somebody and say, we, we gotta fight to get our babies back. Come on, tell somebody, we gotta fight to get our babies. 
So today, today I'm teaching, today I'm, I'm teaching the teens and Los walk in with his shades on. Listen, I, I didn't. He walked in with his shades on. I said, what's up, my dude? How you doing? He was like, hey, what's up, pastor? Then at the class, during the class, he said something. He said, man, I like to, I said, what makes you happy? He said, I like to go walking and just listen and not say nothing. Be still and know that I am God, right? Soon afterwards, he came and he talked to me. He said, well, I said, man, I've been texting you and I showed him the text messages because sometimes people need to know somebody was thinking about me. Sometimes with the craziness of the world, we so busy on looking at what may be wrong, but sometimes you got to look at a child and say, I see what's right in you. Grab somebody that you next to, whether they're an adult or a child, and just put your arms around them and just tell them, I see purpose in you. I see what's right in you. I see victory on the inside of you. And Miss Esperanza was in the room with us. It was just us three. I moved a little desk back. And I said, Los, I need a hug. And let me tell y'all something. A real hug has to last at least three seconds. It's, it's certain endorphins in your body that after three seconds, it's released. So I didn't just do this and say, good to see you. I said, Los, give me a hug, son. And when he hugged me, I said, one, one thousand. Two one thousand, three one thousand. He thought I was just counting, but the one was for the Father, the two was for the Son, the three was for the Holy Ghost. I speak life over lows. Can somebody give God praise? So I need you right where you are. Put your arms around somebody. Hug them for three seconds. Tell them, I don't know what you're going through. You can go hug the elder for me. Say, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you may be dealing with. But Jesus is getting ready to show up. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Tell them, Jesus is getting ready to show up. Now hold him and squeeze him and shake him and and rock them and tell them what the devil meant for your bad. What almost killed you. You almost lost your mind. Yeah. Yeah. some folk that are intercede for some other folk and just put their arms around them and tell them man everything is gonna be all right I got you I got you God allowed you to get through everything you went through to encourage somebody else that they're gonna make you through listen that hug you just gave that person that hug is that Marvin on the back wall come give me a hug man Leave my three second hug. God made it fail.
God made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. God made it fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made it fail. Everything that we're gonna just stay here, y'all. The devil tried. God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything that the enemy tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. He made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. I need you to open up your mouth and give God your best praise. Come on, open your mouth and give God your best praise. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. No, I'm trying to be done. Come on, come on. You connected with somebody, they got the devil is coming up against them and, and they and they thinking the devil is winning, but you gotta encourage them. God is making it fail. Yes, yeah. Anytime you come in contact with somebody, I'm challenging you to leave them better after they've encounter, encountered you. So just so y'all know, if you hug me, it better be for three seconds. Three seconds. At the gym, fellas, if y'all see me hooping, I, I need my three seconds. The whole gym gonna be looking at us like we crazy. We are gonna be sitting there, one. God designed us for connection. And the enemy wants to cause division. Because he know when you alone, he'll get you. See, when I'm by myself, I don't. But if I got somebody with me, when I'm going through, they can pick me up. Then when I get strength and they go through, I can pick them. Dr. Tamaya. Where Dr. Tamaya at? And Dr. Bria. Where Dr. Bria? I just met Dr. Bria this morning for the first time. Where's she at? Come here, y'all. Don't stand right here. Where's Dr. Bria at? Here she go. So yesterday, yesterday, you can stand right here. So yesterday, mom, her mom sent me a picture of her, Bria. Bria, graduating from their first doctor's program through Freighter. They're both in the eighth grade. Y'all are too quiet for me. Y'all are too quiet for me. Y'all are too quiet for me. So what was... And what I love, and, 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 and my wife and my kids will tell you this, like, when I say all the, like, the kids, they my kids, I really mean that. Like, when your child, when your teen is going through, and let me just throw this out there. We got the best youth pastor in the world. Let me just, he start off with them, but when they get teens, they get with me and, and the amazing team that I have with me. But her mama texted me and said, your two daughters graduated today. Right? Now, I had never officially even met my new baby. And I looked, I said, wait a minute, who was that? And then they, I met her mom. Because I remember one Sunday her mom visited. We was going through the, 
the back. She said, I'm coming next week, and we joining the choir. She, her, her mama owned a thousand, right? Look at somebody and say, you need, a, you need a mama that be on a thousand. No, I'm serious. Another story for another day. So when I saw the picture, I said, Tamaya, who is the young girl? She said, well, that's Bria. She, 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 she go here now. She just joined not too long ago. And then she walked through the door. And I said, come here, girl. I said, what's your name? She said, Bria. And I said, it's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Bria. Now, this is what's amazing. I was teaching the teens on the law of environment. You're the sum of the five people that you associate with the most. So your, your kids have an assignment to write out who's the five people they associate with the most because now I can determine if these people are good for you to be connected with as your spiritual dad. I am that guy that'll be like, oh no, we're not gonna deal with them. We're gonna help them get better, but right now they're pulling you away. So y'all, God allowed all of the teens today to see two future doctors in the same room that they in. So guess what that did? Guess what that did? That let them know that if they can do it, some of y'all ain't saying nothing. If they can do it, then I know I have. So, Dr. Los, I love you, my dude. Y'all will catch that later. So y'all, can we celebrate them? Can we celebrate them? So this is, turn around, Lonnie. I'm glad security knew you because they was finna body slam you. <laughs> I'm looking like, no, don't do it, don't do it. That's my man, he good, he good. So, for you ones that don't know, Lonnie, call him Cadillac man. All of my granddad's Cadillacs, until the day he passed, he got through Lonnie. Like just, so Lonnie been in our family, even before he started, became a member, He's been rocking with us for years. That makes sense what I'm saying? Long story short, his daughter, and we got the same birthday, hello. Yeah. His daughter just got accepted into her program to become a doctor. <laughs> Medical school. She a freighter? Yeah, MCW. MCW, Most yeah. Medical College of Counsel. But now, one of our very own, Dr. Williams, She's already on the board at the school that his daughter got accepted in. But she just texted her dad, what she say, I ain't got my... She says, go and meet those two girls and tell them I have an opportunity for them. That was a praise right there, that was a praise, that was a... Go get your mama. Go get your mama, Bree. So, 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 watch this. Now, the, the moms will get with him, connect them with his daughter for an opportunity. Y'all, God always make me look better than what I am. I can't make this up. I need y'all to praise God so we can get out of here and I can go eat. It's after 12. I'm hungry. I need y'all to praise God for some opportunities getting ready to come your way. I need somebody to run up and down the aisle like you crazy, screaming the word opportunity. It works when you do it. I need you to run up and down the aisle screaming opportunity, opportunity. It's some doors God want to open. Huh? Opportunity. Where Dr. Beck at? She right here. Lord, I'm looking right at her. Stretch your hands to her, Dr. Beck. Let's say, Dr. Beck, happy birthday. This will be one of the best years of your life. 
If you believe it for her, give God praise. So as we get ready to leave, we'll see you Tuesday, six o'clock for prayer. I want to challenge everybody here, and I want you to accept this challenge. See what God will do for you if you just show it up on a Tuesday. Listen, just come willingly. Work will make you not feel like it. Life will make you not feel like it. Show up Tuesday, 6 p.m. Hang out with us and see what God going to do as our intercessory prayers warriors pray on your behalf. To the visitors, if anybody want to give their life to Christ, give God praise, give God praise. I think I saw Chris Howell come in today. Chris come in with the code. Chris, can they hoop? Can they hoop hoop? Okay, we're going to connect, man. I want to see, hey, me and Big Robert play any two of y'all. That's all I'm saying, right? We love y'all fellas. I'll connect with y'all in a minute. Listen y'all, to the visitors, you saw people lay money at the altar. They were not bragging, they were just sowing a seed of faith. If you wanna sow a seed of faith, feel free. This is your moment, this is your time. Or you can give, four ways to give online. Um, we love you, we thank God for you. Look at somebody and say, I love you with the love of the Lord and there ain't nothing you can do about it. But if you obey God, I'll be right with her. He'll bless you real good. I would like to meet and greet all visitors really quick after I just pray for this child really quick. Freddie.